the serve with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, uh, for roll call, let the record reflect that all members are present. Uh, and board chair comments. So welcome everybody uh, to a Thursday night edition of uh, school board. Um, so one comment I have is we talked about it, it was talked about a little bit last time, um, policy 210, uh, there was some questions and some asking about um, spouses, of school board members um, and wanting to take that out of uh, or put that into a policy that it would not be available to do. So uh, we talked to a few people, but the director of legal and policy um, for MSBA provided the following uh, about a board member. So Minnesota law has three requirements um, for that. One is that you're a district resident, two is that you're at least 21 years old, and three is that you're not a sexual offender. So he said a board could not augment the requirements under Minnesota law, but would have to work with the legislative to change that law. So that's not something we can put into, into that policy. And even if we did, it wouldn't be something we could do anything about. Um, so I just wanted to start off with that. And I think that's it for board chair comments. Uh, so I will take a motion for approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman, move the agenda. By Director Hackett. Second. Second by Director Bowman. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, appreciation, recognition, and presentations. Looks like we have quite a few. Great. <laughs> Chairman Hopstead, members of the board, Superintendent Wearcamp, I have a Special privilege tonight to introduce Mr. Roush. Um, uh, he is going to go down in history as the most decorated speller in Royalton history. Um, without question, he is the four-time de <laughs> four defending district champion. That has never happened before. Um, he has been a region champion, and he has been a state champion speller at the Spelling Bee. And participated in the Scripps National Spelling Bee uh, last spring. Um, he is about to go back in and defend the title and <laughs> spend the belt and, uh, and uh, represent his school and community uh, in the Spelling Bee. Um, incredibly proud of, of his accomplishment. Um, I remember four years ago, and. I don't know if I ever told this story. I don't know if I told you this story, but <laughs> being a high school guy, when I heard that a fifth grader had won the spelling bee, I'm like, what? A fifth grader won the spelling bee? Boy, that, they must be good. Um, and uh, and here you are, four years later, as the defending four-time defending champion. So um, just taking this opportunity before he goes into competition um, to wish William good luck in the upcoming spelling bees and to uh, be proud of your accomplishments. You have represented yourself and your school and your community very, very well. So congratulations. So if you yeah. have a, grab a picture with the champ. <laughs> have you practiced, William, have you practiced the word you missed in the scripts last year? The chances of you getting that word are pretty slim, but. And what was the word? Oh, it's a German word. Yeah. I don't know. I I Congratulations. You can't compete tomorrow, right? Tomorrow? Next week. Next week? Okay. 
Chair Hofstad, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Ware Camp Herman. Um, I have some other awards to be recognized. First up uh, is our 2024 Excel nominations. Um, Excel is Excellence in Community Education and Leadership. Um, so these are representatives that Mr. Swenson and myself felt were did well in the classroom, were did well on the court as leaders, and also had a fair amount of community service in different areas. So our two people that we nominated was Natasha Ludwig. And Lane Olson. Lane Olson is not able to be here because he's at BPA State. So, so congratulations. Oh, there's one more. No, he's not here. No, he's always not. Oh, so. <laughs> 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 you need to go on the end. Yeah, you, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change it. <laughs> 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 Uh, the other people I have denominate or recognize are our student of the month. Uh, our 2023 December student of the month was Hannah Kruger, so she was nominated by teachers and then voted on by teachers. Um, our January was Aiden Ripple, and Brooke Wenner was our February. Um, she might show up later. She's at play practice right now. So these three were the December, February, and, and January student of the month for the high school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Hofstad, members of the board, Superintendent Workcamp. My name is Amy Kerr, Human Resources Director, and I am here to recognize um, Caitlin Frenchick and congratulate her on completing her Educational Specialist K-12 Principal License. Um, she officially changed her title to Assistant Principal slash Activities Director um, and moved into the Principal's contract as of February 2nd. So congratulations. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for recognition. Okay. Uh, recognition of citizens for input purposes next. Uh, next, we'll go to reports and news. So, uh, board committee report, uh, finance. Uh, finance, finance committee met um, February 28th. Um, we didn't have a whole lot to discuss. We're going to go through um, the budget for next year tonight. We talked a little bit about the um, variation of enrollment numbers, and she's going to probably go through some of that historical data and some information on that tonight, too. That's about it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, policy. Okay. Policy committee met. Um, we have a big slate of ones that we're going to go with final readings. Um, we got the conflict of interest one. Um, Ryan talked about that a little bit. Uh, student discipline, that's going to be third and final. There's minor changes. School and meals policy, that's third and final. Uh, credit for learning, third and final. The Literacy and Read Act, that's third and final. And we're going to pass that, and we know there's going to be changes to that as soon as legislation comes out, but we're going to pass it as it is right now. Um, <coughs> online learning options is third and final. Um, student activity accounting, that's going to be second and final. That's just minor changes in the wording there. Um, then we have two that are going to go in for second readings. It's fund balance policy and video surveillance other than on buses. And that's a new policy. So, um, yeah, that's if you you should read through that one if you haven't. So, 
That's it. Yep. All right. Thank you. And then uh, Midstate. So uh, there's a few things happening at Midstate. Uh, recently, Little Falls has asked to join Midstate again. So they were originally with Midstate, and uh, uh, quite a while ago they left. And uh, they're talking. They asked about coming back in. So uh, right now. Uh, everybody's like, well, I don't know what that looks like and how does that affect us and our um, supports that we have there and different things like that. So uh, we're, our executive director of Midstate there, Lisa, is going to have a third party come in and tell us what that would look like and what that would cost us and, and some of the different changes that would go on with that uh, before any of the districts get to decide. So I would say in the next few months, we'll probably have a vote on that in the this board of what we want to do for the mid state that'll take that that vote there. Uh, beyond that, they're dealing with all the same stuff policy wise and everything else that we are. So um, that's really about it. No, no big stuff additional there. They're so much bigger than everybody else. I know, but it would, from what we understand right now, it would cost us less to have them come in and we would gain uh, placement areas. So. I'm hopeful that that's actually the case and then it would be a great thing. But we'll see. That's just what we think right now. Uh, superintendent report. So I want to, first of all, we recognize our Minnesota uh, school bus driver day, which was Wednesday, February 21st. So we got to go up to the bus garage and thank them for their service. They're doing very well up there. And also it was National, National School Social Worker Week. And so we uh, want to honor them. Very, very happy with the support they provide our students. We just really have dedicated social workers here in our district. I'm very proud to work with them. Um, and then I want to give an update. The Strategic Planning Committee met. And if you want to show the document. Um, so as you know, we're working on a communication plan. No, the... Yeah. Thank you. So we've gone ahead and put a lot of work into this document, and this is an inventory document. And you can see we have, Michelle, have you manipulate that a little bit, move it around. You can see all the different areas of district leadership to parents, how we communicate teachers to students. So we're looking at the platform, the channel, the frequency, and the actual form was designed with the input of the committee and then the staff, various uh, leaders and teachers and other staff went ahead and filled in how they communicate. You can even go down further a little bit. You can see we have the transportation department and then other departments because you have some miscellaneous kinds of things that come. So we first got this information together um, and now we are going to go back and survey the community. We'll be sending that survey out tomorrow. Um, it'll be out for probably two weeks or so and get the um, community's input on how they think that we do with communication and get their input. And it's um, going to be kind of wordy, so really have to just let them type in what they think. So we'll look at different areas. How does the district communicate with you? How do teachers communicate with your students or with you, principals, et cetera? And so we have all those various folks look at what do we do well and what do we need to improve and what ideas and suggestions might you have. And so that um, came from the committee too. So we'll go ahead and get that out. Once that survey is completed, we will then com compile that data, bring it back to staff first so they can see what they said and what ideas they might have. And then we'll come back to the committee again and talk about really designing the plan of maybe we can get rid of some things, maybe we can do some things differently, um, but we'll know more once we get some of that information. So. That meeting went really well. It was really helpful. And, um, not not large people, a lot of people coming, but very engaged when they're there. So, is this document out there anywhere to see? No, I, it okay. was internal because we had to yep. keep working on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll eventually get um, an actual plan, mm -hmm. and then um, thinking about as well a calendar on timing, so we kind of have a communications timing. Nice. Okay. Uh, business manager report. Uh, good evening, and uh, board chair Hofstad and board members, and Dr. Christine Work and Herman. Uh, tonight, uh, I'll be up here a few different times. Uh, this time, it will be to go over the monthly uh, budget update uh, for. 
meeting March, February information for the fiscal year of 2024. Uh, this is a, a slide that we see uh, every month. It is regarding enrollment, uh, how en enrollment impacts the district and our funding. Um, enrollment originally was budgeted at 935 based on previous year's historical data and current trends. We have since uh, continued to track that. And as of February of 2024, we're at 914 enrolled in the district, down just a little bit from January. We continue to track that monthly. Um, as we, we talked about before, it does, enrollment does impact uh, our funding, uh, most notably. Enrollment uh, may or may not impact uh, staffing uh, future and um, otherwise. However, enrollment up or down numbers wise doesn't necessarily mean that we do need to uh, consider staffing changes and or that it would impact staffing. There are a lot of variables that go into uh, the number of students in the district and those coming in and or those enrolling out uh, and what grades and or what needs those students might have. So there's, again, like I had mentioned, a lot of variability in how enrollment impacts staffing. Overall, though, we do know it impacts our funding given increase or decrease potentially. So we continue to track it and we'll continue to monitor it going forward. This is a look at our general fund revenues. I apologize for the size of the, the slide. It is a lot of information uh, to look at. Um, and so it does get a little bit small, but overall we're about halfway through the year when you take into consideration our revenue streams. Uh, noting that the state and federal governments meter their, their funds uh, with revenue and timing. And so overall, we're on track with current year budget at 47%. Uh, those percentages do go up or down a little bit. And as to why I am going to recommend a budget revision consideration later this evening. Uh, similarly, general fund expenditures on track with current year budget at 15, 51% overall. Similar, similarly noted uh, halfway through the year. And again, a percentage up or down one or two or three percent is common. However, budget revision consideration is coming up later this evening for expense as well. And that's all I have on the monthly update question. If no questions, I will go into the follow up on the conversations we have been having board and uh, administration on unpaid lunch debt. So account balances of students and families uh, that have negative lunch account balances uh, that stem back to as far as 2016 for inactive staff or inactive participants, lunch accounts, uh, staff or non-staff student families and active as far back as 2019. And so we've been spending some time over the last few months pulling the data, compiling the data, with a lot of help and support from David and Dr. Christine Burkamp Herman on reviewing the data, finding out what opportunities we have to connect with those families, staff, students uh, with uh, unpaid lunch debt uh, account balances and what collectability, if any, we have on those funds. And so a couple of weeks ago, I had made some phone calls on behalf of the recommendation of the board at the last meeting. I was able to connect with a, a few of the uh, the participants that had uh, unpaid lunch debt balances. Of those that I contacted and were able to connect with, uh, many of them chose not to pay it back due to various reasons. Uh, and then others I wasn't able to contact and either left messages or the information contact that I had was no longer valid. And so I have been working to uh, further define what that next step is or that process uh, to consider a write-off of what is 
called uncollectible debt. So I'll just go through a, a high level overview of what that those steps look like. So we've already gone through some of those steps, um, classifying it, whether it's collectible, meaning it's delinquent, but we still have a likely uh, response to collecting uh, the delinquent debt or uncollectible, which is uh, classified as bad debt. Uh, in the scope of the state statute. And so with that, um, if you're going to, or if the board is going to ag agree or approve to write off bad debt, we need to have taken um, some concerted steps in order to do that. And so effort being one of them. And so what efforts have we taken uh, over you know, a timeline to show that we are working to collect uh, those bad debts? Uh, what evidence do we have? So documenting what types of efforts we made. Uh, documentation is key. So documenting what response, if any, and uh, what that response was. And then ultimately determining that based on our effort or evidence and our documentation that we need to consider a write-off. Once we get to that point, we determine uh, how much uh, of that on. Uh, uncollected debt we are going to write off and based on state statute we are not able to use federal funds uh, to compensate for that bad debt which means we cannot use the food service fund uh, balance to absorb that debt so that would be a general fund a bad debt write-off expense from our general fund resources that is all i have on the process of uh, documenting and writing off unpaid lunch debt. Any questions? Sure. I don't, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just, I don't really have a question, but we did talk about in the finance committee about the enrollment numbers. Um, I don't, Marie and I kind of talked about like, if you really want to find out why people are not attending school here and attending elsewhere to just ask them because we're not really going to know what's the real, you know, you can speculate and you can hear people talking, but to really see like if there's a trend, I think we would need to contact the students who are in district but not attending here to find out, to then see is there a trend or is it a, just a bunch of one-offs? I don't know. And I don't know if that was going to be on the works. If, I don't know if we were so, going to bring I that up. speak to or, that. Um, so I, I do appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, so what I'm doing and what I'm working on is compiling some historical data. Some of that data is readily available on MDE's site uh, for different types of enrollment. Uh, others is not, and it, it requires a public data request to MDE. So I'm in that stage of doing that. So at this time, I, I would say that we don't have the data available in order to have a thorough conversation around what the next steps might be in terms of the enrollment discussion. So for the ones that that's what I was going to talk about too is the for the ones that we know from this year, um, can we go and contact them because we do know who that is or not? Yeah. So if can we do an exit interview with them? Like, is that something the board wants to do? I, I would like to just to know, A, is it because of your morning routine, things aren't going well and it's easier to do this? Or, you know, obviously the, the ALP, ALC uh, moves, we can't do anything about because they need different supports than what we have here. But the, the ones that either leave the district for homeschool or leave the district for somebody else, what do you guys think? I think it's worthwhile with the amount of decrease we've seen this year to find out if there's a trend or like if it's just a bunch of one-offs and there's nothing we can really do, but if it's consistently seeing the same thing, then it might be something we have to address. Anybody else? <laughs> Do it in that area. That's a question. My thought would be a BHR, but I don't, what do you guys think? Do you want this to be a phone call, an email? Like how do you, oh, have we, 
might be hard for people to come in. You know, yeah, okay. this might be a right. little challenging for some, but or give them an option. Send an email inquiring if they'd like to meet or talk on the phone. I think so. I, I'm not really worried about the um, what platform is used. I'm more worried about the, the information. Is I'm wondering if it'd be better coming from the principals. A little more personal contact. Is there a way to make it a third party? There's service out there that you could. Awesome. Well, I think as I'd say, we need to be careful for like if there's any data privacy. Well, that's so. That would be my if part point. of the problem is <clears throat> board, administration, school, and then the questions are coming. Are you going to get real answers or not? You know, I don't. Are you really? You're really thinking about it. Maybe, maybe somehow it should be yep. or board member. Yep. I think that would be better than. And I, I'm, I'm not jumping up saying I want more work, but I don't think this is an administrative job. <laughs> yep. I really don't think it is. This is, should come from either the board member or a third party. That's. As a we're, member, we're members of this community, just like, you know, that, that's part of our statute to be here and we're members of the community. So if we really genuinely think I call, I mean, I don't think that'd be a terrible thing. I mean, we can draw straws, whoever gets the shortest one gets to make the call or we can go on a rotating for... deal or something, you know, it, it's, a, it's a phone call. It's not that hard. I mean, if, if they don't want to talk about it, then you can't make them talk. Maybe right. they're going to tell you something you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what I think should be <clears throat> either a third party or from a board member. I agree with that. You do? Yeah. So would a board member have access to that information? Right. Well that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. How are we are we entitled to that? that? That information. Like, I'll do some checking. Yeah, I, I don't know that we necessarily would be. I'll double check on whether it's public or not. It has been in the past. Name, address, phone numbers are public data. And then we have the way to that. Yeah, I don't want to cross any lines either. I just yeah. want we'll to do a double check for that privacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we'd have to prepare the exit interview questions yeah, so that yeah we would have to that would be a work that, session that we have <laughs> come up with a you know yeah so it doesn't come questions. out biased or anything else right. or you try to get down to mm -hmm. it you know because if we're going to take the time to do what you want we want to get as close to the truth as we can get yep does anybody have an example of an exit interview in their work or anything i can get those mm -hmm. as hr wise but I don't know if this would be tailored differently yeah. because it's more about your students and their. Yep. Well, so we could. I have one that we use, and the questions are a little bit different, but they're basically asking the same thing like, is there something we could have done better? That type of stuff. Right. Um, I don't know. Do you want to talk about that as a work session? Yep. We just have something that we can create for a little. Um... <clears throat> All right. Anything else? Anything else? Okay. Oh, good discussion. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, principal report. Chairman Ofsted, members of the board, Superintendent Wearcamp, Herman. Um, two short things uh, tonight. One was the student led conference. Um, the student led conferences were attended in late February. Uh, and we had a overall participation rate of parents grades six through 11 seniors did not participate, but it was 70.14%. Um, average attendance rate in the spring for the high school conference, sometimes between 30 and 40%. And so we had a very good, uh, I think it was 72% in the middle school and 68% at the high school level. So it was uh, very consistent across the board. Um, and so that's a good thing. That means parents are in the building and they're having conversations uh, with their students and with teachers. And that is a, that is always a good thing for, for us when that happens. Uh, second is, uh, I don't know if you saw the record, but we had two teachers that were recognized as innovative uh, teachers of the year through uh, Region 5 um, 
we had um, a luncheon today in Brainerd with uh, Lake Matheson and John Koenig and myself attended and with the board of that group, that innovative group. And it's a group of business people, college people that are interested in finding new ways to engage kids in the classroom. I mean, that's uh, from their, from their uh, mouths today to us talking about what they're looking for and, and the other um, teachers that have won it before, they've been doing it for uh, four years now. Um, they did a radio interview this morning. Actually, they played it for us this afternoon while we were there. It was on the Brainerd WJJY, the Brainerd radio station, uh, talked about the Royalton winners. And um, they will be doing a video next week where they're coming with their videographer and doing a, a video on the innovative uh, schools uh, teachers of the year. Uh, this is the first time that this has been awarded outside of uh, Crow Wing County and the first time that the single school had two winners. Um, they were incredibly impressed and I'll tell you what I, I told John and they so we went they went around the table and talked about their projects today and talked about their thinking and um, I hired them. I mean, they make me look smart just by doing that. I mean, today was great. Um, they really represented us well, and I thought that the committee was very impressed. They said they were very impressed with their what they're attempting and what they're working on in classes, and uh, it was a very good. It was just a very good dialogue and a very good conversation today. So, uh, they will be attending the. Educators of Excellence and will be recognized. They kind of go through all the teachers that are and support staff that are being recognized. And then they have some of these specialized awards, like a team of the year. And I don't mean like a sports team. I mean like a, um, yes, yeah. a technology team or a, a para team or a, you know, a team of teachers from a school district, an administrator, um, and then the, these innovative teachers will be recognized uh, at that banquet as well. So um, looking forward to that, they will show that video, that promotional video of that mm -hmm. award winning. Uh, they will show that video at this banquet in front of all the other schools of Region 5, which is going to be really cool. So um, with that, that's what I have. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Hobson, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Ward Camp Herman. Um, this month flew by. Man, we're live. We're already <laughs> mid-March. Um, and we so we wrapped up. I'd love to read month in February. Um, on the 29th, we had our dear day, drop everything and read. So at just some random time the teachers chose. Uh, you stop what they're doing, picked up a book, and just started reading. So uh, that wrapped up that nicely. And then we had our Kids Heart Challenge, which was the uh, Jump Rope for Heart. So get to our challenge. Uh, we we raised seventy eight percent of the goal, so no one's got their hair dyed or <laughs> cut. Um, I, I think uh, Senior David and Meyer were uh, okay with that. <laughs> but, um, but no, the the kids did really well. They were pretty excited about it, to go in there and, and just uh, and jump rope and, and have some fun. Um, <clears throat> moving forward here, uh, band concert on Monday, um, three eighteen, six o'clock, and seven o'clock uh, performances. So um, that'll be that'll be great, and then there's a co choir concert on Tuesday as well. Um, next week is the end of the third quarter on Thursday, so <clears throat> it's coming fast. So on Thursday the twenty first, we're doing our bell ringing in the morning, and uh, something that we haven't done um, up until this year is we're bringing kindergarten over a little earlier, so they get to experience a bell ringing ceremony, and then um, they get to do their tours. Meet the students, kind of look at the classrooms, and then go play on the playground, and then get back here for lunch. So it'll be a really busy morning for them, and then we'll have our school-wide celebrations as well going on throughout the day of of different grade levels mm -hmm. getting together, doing different things, and and having some fun. And as we get into the fourth quarter here, um, we are rolling into MCAs here after after Easter, so that is coming up here in April. So we're gearing up for that, and um, 
we're, we're busy planning for spring field trips, but also planning for summer and into next school year. So busy time. Any questions? Okay, thank you. All right, uh, consent agenda approval. So um, <clears throat> approval of regular board meeting minutes from uh, February 12th, the claims, accounts, and financials, uh, and the approval of the resignation and termination. Does anybody have anything they want to pull from that? Okay. From the entire consent agenda? Yes. Just one much. I, I do. I'd like to ask some questions about the claims, accounts, and financials. Okay. Well, so we don't have to pull it to do that. Oh, okay. uh, that's okay. questions on the discussion. Okay. Absolutely. So I'll take a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Uh, Director Hackett, thank you. Second. Second by Director Bowman. All right, and discussion. I just have a couple questions. Maybe Heidi can answer, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but as I was looking through the detailed uh, check registry, I was just wondering, um, I see that we have three payments going out to mid-state, three different invoices. Is that correct? I just was wondering if that was correct or if that was a mistake. It just all the numbers seem exactly the same and they just separate invoice yeah, numbers. So that is correct. Uh, we are billed monthly and those three invoices culminated up to paying them all at the same time. I had received them electronically and had given them to our accounts payable clerk all at the same time. Sure, sure. Okay. And then I just have two other smaller questions. I was wondering, and maybe, I don't know who it would, maybe David would know this. I don't know. who. What is Tyler Technologies or Case subscription? What is that company for? Does anybody know what that That's subscription for, uh, is for? Transportation. Uh, company, but the PACE is um, additional support. Uh, they can do, um, they can request like tech support basically, where they will do trainings and different things with the uh, uh, transportation director. Oh, okay. Good to know. And then I just was wondering what the company was, the ECM publishers. Morrison County Record. That, oh, that I, I had that same question. I was like, where's for these guys? I had to look it up myself. Okay. I didn't know Why that. Why are we printing for each? Oh, no, that's for the newspaper to put it in there. Okay. That was it. That was all I have for questions on um, claims and accounts of financials. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, number 10 is uh, donations by resolution. All right. I will introduce this. Um, introduce the following resolution and move its adoption. Uh, Little Falls Machine has generously offered to donate $250 to the Royalton Community Education Robotics to be used for registration, supplies, and or tournament fees. And Vernig Man Manufacturing has graciously donated $500 to the Royalton Community Education Robotics to be used for registration, supplies, and or tournament fees. Um, so the conditions of this gifts are in the packet and be it resolved by the Royalton School Board to gratefully accept these gifts the motion for adoption of the foregoing resolution was duly seconded by member. Trout. Trout. Thank you. And upon a roll call vote being taken, following voted. Director Hackett. Aye. And Director Hofstad. Aye. Director Trout. Aye. Director Bowman. Aye. Director Boyd. Aye. Director Roy. Abstain. All right. That passes 6 0. This 14th day of March. All right. Uh, FY24 revised budget. Good evening again. Board Chair Hofstede, members of the board, Dr. Christine Lockhamperman. 
this is a presentation this evening for uh, consideration for you, the board to approve a revised FY24 budget for all funds. And I'll go through the presentation. I will provide some commentary based on the presentation and um, we'll take questions at the end if that sounds good. Uh, this is a budget revision specific to fund one. So this is our general fund. Uh, I look at revenues and expense in detail to determine what, if anything, has changed from the original budget that you all approved back in June of 2023. Specific to general fund revenue, uh, special education cross subsidy, support aid, and unemployment reimbursement, all are increases to the original budgeted revenue for the general fund, mainly due to the fact that when legislation was ending or wrapping up late in uh, May uh, before their, their deadline, the uh, legislation did include additional cross subsidy support aid and reimbursement for uh, the non-licensed between terms unemployment expense. However, we didn't know to what extent that was going to be at that time. So assumptions were made. We now know the results of, of those three types of funding. So that is included in the budget revision as an increase uh, to the, the budget uh, revenue. And then expense, again, just depending on the timing uh, of the year and what might uh, still be uh, not not um, uh, completed. Uh, so expense revisions include an increase in wages and benefits specific to uh, contract settlements not being settled at the time that the original budget was, was approved and uh, the unknown of to what extent our non-licensed staff that are eligible for the unemployment benefit. We also assumed what that might be. So we now know the results of both of uh, those types of revisions. Purchase services. So these are all the, the payments we make to vendors to provide services to the district. We had a decrease in uh, the budgeted fees, uh, fees for service purchase services due to LTFM projects that took place last fiscal year that uh, were finished and completed and not needing to be completed this year. Supplies, specifically an increase uh, for curriculum and technology expense and capital expense, a decrease due to, again, similar to our long-term facilities maintenance projects. Uh, we had completed a, an extensive um, project uh, projects uh, last fiscal year that uh, was a, a decrease this fiscal year. Enrollment is budgeted uh, in this revision at 920 adjusted uh, daily membership. This is a, a look at previous uh, fiscal year's final results, original mm -hmm. budget as approved back in June, and a revised budget based on the information I just shared. Overall, a decrease in expense of just over 3%. Again, the majority of that was in the capital expenditures and, and purchase services categories uh, due to projects being completed in the previous fiscal year, and a small increase just under 1% of revenue based on the three categories of funding that we have results for now, with a small surplus of about $633 budgeted for this fiscal year in the general fund. This is a look at the same information on the previous slide, but it breaks it out based on the types of uh, fund balances. Uh, the top of this uh, graph uh, lists all of the reserve fund requirements, fund balances based on state statute, and as we're directed uh, only to spend on eligible expense, and the revenue we receive has to go towards that as well. The middle uh, part is what's left over. Uh, if anything is assigned, that would have been on the bottom. But unassigned fund balance is everything that's left over, uh, previous year's uh, balance plus revenue minus expense, uh, taking into account anything of that that is reserved, ends our fiscal year 24 at a budgeted projection of about just under 1.8 million. 
which uh, equates to about a 16% fund balance based on total expense. Board policy is 14 to 20%, so we do plan uh, to land within the policy as uh, projected. Uh, are, next. There any, are there any questions on oh. <laughs> before we yeah. continue on? That's a, one that's a lot to take in too. Okay. Uh, next mm -hmm. is our uh, budget revision consideration for fund two, which is our food service fund. Again, looking at revenue and expense as it was originally budgeted. The revenue increase is due to the state supplementing the already federal reimbursed meals. And so we will see an increase in budgeted revenue there. As far as expense, uh, minimal when, when we're looking at the, the total budget of food service. However, um, the, the expenses, I want to make sure I'm speaking correctly, the expenses uh, is, a, is a, about a $30,000 increase in salaries and benefits. Um, uh, let me let me restate that. So as far as um, benefits, health insurance uh, has actually has decreased as far as the, the number of participants, staff choosing the health care. So that benefit in the food service department actually went down by about 15,000. Fees for service uh, went down about six thousand dollars. Previous year, we paid and had more repairs necessary than uh, this year as projected, and then supplies and the cost of food and milk as compared to the previous fiscal year, and based on our current trends, is also decreasing just under uh, 30000 So overall, um, a food service surplus uh, of about 51000 and a fund balance of about 27%, and you can see those numbers on the next slide. So as I mentioned, a small decrease in expense of about 15,000 and, uh, and a, a larger increase in revenue of about 11% uh, due to, again, the supplement of the state reimbursing what the federal reimbursement doesn't. Any questions on food service? I have a quick question. Yeah. So the revenues went up due to the free meals. Is that a dependable income from this point going forward? So then when we budget next year, like the budgets don't have to look so different from the original to the adjusted. So your question is twofold. Yeah, sorry. No, in, in my mind, it is. Uh, the original budget was prepared prior to me being here. Right. And so I can't speak to what, if I had done that budget, I can't speak to what that would be. Um, however, it, it would show based on the previous fiscal year's trends that we would be somewhere around that six hundred seven hundred thousand dollars in revenue uh, why it was budgeted uh, below that I can't speak to that uh, as far as your question is it sustainable going forward maybe okay. <laughs> that depends on legislation right so as long as they continue to provide uh, those reimbursements at the state level I have not heard anything different in conjunction with <clears throat> Will our students' participation in those free meals continue to the same level, which I would expect. Uh, that's what we see, see fairly standard around all the districts. So I don't know if that answers your question. However, I my goal in building the fiscal year budget for food service and all other funds is to, to really take into account historical data, current data, and putting in the knowns and assuming a reasonable assumption in the unknowns. Is that the only revenue stream? It's just the free lunch for this fund balance? Uh, free lunch staff paid 
meals, if the sure. staff are paying meals, uh, we do get some, um, so it's federal and state aid majority, um, some local revenues as far as staff paid meals. Um, Second. Yep, seconds, seconds and a la carte. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did I answer your question? I know it was. Yeah. All right, next fund is uh, our uh, fund four, which is community services. This is uh, the budget revision that I'm recommending both revenue and expense. Uh, again, uh, revenue is increasing in the community uh, services revenue as compared to the original budget by, by about $23,500. Uh, mainly due to program participation. So increase in program participation uh, in addition to uh, programs being offered and the increase in interest in those programs. Expense, uh, we're seeing an increase in uh, wages and benefits, mainly due to staffing and then those contract settlements that were not quite settled prior to the original budget being prepared and approved and supplies going up um, a little bit as well uh, due to program participation. The more opportunities we have to provide um, our programs to those that participate is a direct correlation to an increase in supplies as well, depending on the program. Fund balance uh, is about uh, $341,000 or 65%. And then the next slide shows those numbers in detail. As I had mentioned, an increase in uh, salaries as compared to the uh, previous fiscal year and uh, an increase in supplies as well. Increase in revenue of about $23,500 and results in about a $33,000 deficit in our community services revised budget. Any questions? Community service. I have more questions, sorry. <laughs> um, I know you weren't here when we made the original budget, but is there a reason that such conservative numbers would have been budgeted in the salaries and wages given all the increases that we had made in staffing. Um, it seems counterintuitive to have that number be so reserved there so that we have such a grand increase in salary and wages to what we actually need to budget. Right. Uh, again, I, I can't speak to the, the, the preparation of the original budget and how those numbers came to be other than it looks to be somewhat similar to previous uh, years results. What do we do? I can look about... into that further if that's that's helpful to you. Uh, my recommendation for just my future planning of fiscal year's budgets is to work with, again, more historical data and current trends with community services being a fees for service program, majority of, of that is fees for service. So participants pay to, to participate. It can fluctuate uh, to some extent. And that's why staffing is a challenge uh, because it depends on you know different variables there with either preschool or just general education programs and, and those interested in participating. So in this revised budget, we're showing a deficit of 33,000. What do we do about regaining that? Is that something that needs to be addressed immediately or is that just gonna work out in the trend data over uh, so, time? Um, it's important to, to further define, you know, what areas do we need to reconsider whether that's uh, programming, are the programs that we are offering providing uh, a return uh, on those, those offerings? Uh, do we have a staffing set to provide uh, the learning opportunities within our preschool program that also 
impacts our revenue and expense. And then the last thing that I look at is the fund balance. So making sure that our fund balance isn't in, in a, a state where we would need to be heightened or immediate concern. Overall, the community ed education or community services fund balance is, is very fiscally financially stable. So that would be further conversation with our directors and uh, Dr. Christine Workham Herman to further determine what, if any, areas can we look at and further impact that bottom line. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're assuming that, at least I'm assuming that's coming from preschool, most of that. The deficit, yep. yes. And that's very standard, very traditional, uh, not only here, but across all districts uh, is that our preschool programs are not fully funded by any means by state and or levy. And we are required to provide preschool services to all. And so whether they pay, they can pay or not, there are some opportunities for students and families to receive scholarship funding, but that's also limited. So. Uh, funding legislatively for community services, specifically to preschool, is, in my opinion, an educated uh, response would, would be considerably underfunded. Where we see the gain in that is usually the, the school-aged uh, before, after school, and summer care programs that yep. offset that. Uh and then this is also, if we have them here for preschool, we're hoping that they enroll in kindergarten and now yeah. they're part of our ADMs for, Correct. for that. Okay. And then the final uh, fund is our debt service fund. And this is very straightforward. Legislatively, uh, we are set with uh, our levy and the expense. Is, is specific to state statute. So uh, overall, just a, a small increase in uh, surplus based on the fiscal year 23 of about oh, a little less than $8,000. Any questions on fund seven or uh, budget overall? All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think we revised budget. Second. I'll say it. Director Hackett. All right, any, any other discussion on it? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Staying? Motion carries. All right, we will have seen it, class trip. Chairman Hofstede, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Weirkamp, uh, this is the proposal for the annual senior class trip. I think we've gone on it every year with the same itinerary for 25 years, at least. Um, they'll go to Cragen's the week before graduation, leave on Sunday morning, pray for good weather. Um, they stay overnight at Cragen's on Sunday night, and then uh, they're back, in, back to Royalton before the end of the school day on Monday. Um, we usually try to do the lakeside cabins. We order enough pizza for them. They couldn't. Actually, last year's group, and you know some of the big groups. <laughs> they actually did finish the pizza. I mean, I ordered a pizza. I ordered enough. So I'm sure the challenge will be there this year to follow that up. But um, uh, they uh, they knocked down the pizza last year. Um, but we order, we order 40, 45 pizzas from Domino's. And uh, they... Uh, we, they stop and eat on the way home. They, we go to Buffalo Wild Wings and Brainerd, um, buy some donuts and things like that for them when they wake up in the morning. 
Um, but we have the lakeside cabins. They have golfing. They have a par three free course. I've had kids that have gone and golf the legacy, but mm -hmm. it's a little spendy. Um, but the kids that really like golf, it's a chance they might not uh, get again. Um, they have the pool, hot tub, ping pong, paddle boats, canoes. They cannot rent or use motorized vehicles, so they can't rent a pontoon. They have tried, um, but um, it has been, I've, I've chaperoned this probably three or four times, and um, uh, it really is a good time, and it's a, kind of their last, <laughs> their last uh, big event before they go into graduation on Thursday night. So um, just looking for approval because it's overnight that uh, the board approves those. So. And this is all paid for from the student activity account? It's all paid for through their class dues, yep. yes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move the senior class trip for adoption. All right, Director Hackett, I'll second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, Nationals trip for robotics. Um, so our robotics team had a very good showing at uh, State that was in St. Cloud at the end of February. Um, they got a invitation to do attend Worlds, which is down in Dallas, Texas. Um, so this is kind of the outline of some of the different costs. Um, the registration to attend is a $1,800. Um, we've looked at flying options and driving options. Um, lodging was looked at at the hotel that was actually at the convention or VRBO, and then some food, food stuff. Um, when it breaks down, I think if you go to the next one. So our recommendation is that they would drive um, the school would cover the lodging at the hotel for the four nights. Um, so that would be roughly the $1,800. Um, we would provide the school van um, and the fuel to get down there and back. Um, and then we would cover the costs for the four um, students and their coach at a $50 um, per day per diem. Um, so then as a district, it would cost roughly $3,390. Any um, additional cost over that would need to come from either donations or from their student activity account. Um, just as a side note, with the driving, it would probably have them out of school an extra couple days. I have a, just a question. Is this like comparable, like as like as far as like what we pay for like if FFA does nationals or so, like are we, Paying the, for the same type they of nationals it was a little different this last year because they didn't actually no one actually qualified so all of that actually came out of donations and stuff like that like we i think provided the van and stuff like that but most of the stuff came from donations or the student activity account so, so i looked at what we did for bpa last yeah, month or like any of the other so for them we covered their registration which is what we're doing here the lodging the 50 dollars a day for each of the people there and then it was a district van and fuel. Okay. So that's what we covered for BPA as well. I just wanted to make sure we were staying consistent yep. with what we that's did. That's exactly what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to short anybody anywhere else or you know. Yep. And I did look at the BPA stuff just to make sure and because it is a little different. I mean their actual registration was higher than what we would have had to pay for the BPA, but I think we came to a good yeah. compromise. So the donations that come okay. in does any of that offset our district stuff or does that go straight to I mean I think no. I would assume that it would first cover whatever we as a district have said that we're not able, not going to cover and then if we they get over that amount then I would assume it'd come back to the district or their program okay that would be my assumption and it's, correct me if I agree wrong but I think it'd be it's over eight thousand dollars for the total of everything and when is this? Um, it is, they would leave, go back up to the top. I think that the dates, I think the contest is the 27th through May 1st. So they would get down there, leave on April 26th roughly, and then return, come back on the 1st. They'll get back to school by the 2nd would be the hope. And with flying, why 
because if they would fly, there would be potentially extra charges or somebody potentially still would have to drive to bring the robotic stuff and the equipment down. I have one quick question. On the first page, um, the lodging proposals for five nights, but then on your recommendation page, lodging is only so we four nights. Is, is it a four night stay or a five night stay? That um, so we looked at it and I talked to Heidi about it, and we we're going to cover the cost for the actual contest. So oh, like okay. some of that, some of that is the driving that they may have to, depending on when they leave and stuff, they may feel like they have to stay at a night one of the nights. And I, I map quest that it's like a 15 hour drive. So, I mean, if you have two adults, you could get it done in a day. Be cool if they had a self driving car for this. <laughs> maybe they could. Maybe get the yes vote involved. Wait, okay. I'm going to motion to approve. All right. By Director Bowen. I'll second it. Second by Director Hackett. Any other discussion or questions? <laughs> all right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Motion well, carries. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is 24, 24 25 school calendar. So I'm just bringing back to get the calendar approved for next year two <clears throat> options. Um, the first one was the typical calendar that we normally have. Uh, can you go down to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, um, similar to prior years. And then the second option includes the early outs to provide elementary teachers opportunities to work together to get that uh, letters training completed for the asynchronous times. And those calendars are attached in the board. My recommendation is the early outs um, the board can approve either one. So on the early outs on that option four, that would mean that we switch eight Wednesdays to early outs. And then for our Wednesdays or C days, are they still late starts? No. Yes. They they function like they normally do. Okay. That would and so the no, elementary no, start on time. No. The Wednesdays would the Wednesdays the the, the D day, the blue days would the D days. They'd be D e days. Yep. So, so the C days, days are the same. Yeah. Yeah. But the C days are the same. So yep. elementary the rest has of the C days are right. they're always the same. Yeah. Okay. Has there been any discussion? So the buses would run early. Any discussion on, like, I know we have MAP, right? Mm -hmm. We have MAP available. Map would be available. Yep, and MAP only goes through fifth grade, right? Okay. So um, the question is, is there a family need for middle school? For us to have something for that. That's what do we do on late? Do the buses run at the normal time on late start? Yeah, because they start the elementary starts at regular time. What happens with middle schoolers at that point then that are bus here? That choose to come. They they're in the commons and we have some pairs here. Because there's going to be a couple of those days if we go with the auction report, there's going to be a couple of those days where there's going to be an area of time between the end of the school day and the beginning of sports, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's so not going to be all of them, junior a high couple would, of them. Yeah, junior high would probably look at a cancellation on that Wednesday of practice, potentially. Okay. Unless parents come and want something, you'd have to figure out a way to, they'd have to probably pay a fee like you pay for math if you're in a staff of staff. And I did verify all the surrounding districts to do early outs. So another thing just for the board too, um, as we were talking about this, uh, last time we had talked about uh, stipends and pay and board credits for that. So I asked for that to be taken off because I think that's something that should be negotiated with a teacher contract and not just approved by the board right now. And the, the second piece of that is um, we're talking about approving something for something that will happen two years from now. So I, I'm i not confident that the legislature isn't going to say, hey, 
um, we're going to pay a thousand dollars to everybody or five hundred dollars. I mean, they end in two years. To end in two years. Yeah. Yep. So at that started. time, when they end, then you know, if there's something there, the legislature could say, "Hey, if everybody that goes through that, they already get a stipend, and then we've already put that into a contract or a negotiation with that." Um, that really be double payment for for that. So I'd kind of like to wait and see uh, what the legislature does with that, if anything, since. Since they have come back around a little bit and yeah, they already have had several iterations for the read act. I don't know where it's like they haven't come to a landing yet, but they've done some changes. So we'll see where that ends up. I hope we don't end up pumping the brakes and no, April. the only thing that I haven't heard that the only changes that I've seen so far, but again, it's there's another I just talked to Deb Hunt today. There's another revision that she's going to be looking at. Um, taking away the high school, the secondary component of that requirement for the science of teaching reading for the secondary. What? That's not necessarily the best thing. Yeah, but the way it was currently written, it well, that good, might be, good but, good be. It, but yeah. So I don't know how much money is being appropriated. Additional uh -huh. dollars are being appropriated. That hasn't come to my attention yet as to how much. And again, it's still in. In iteration after iteration, conference committee. That I have a question on the early outs. Um, is this going to be just a two year fluctuation, a one year plan of early outs, or is this going to be a change henceforth in our regularly programmed calendar? No, I think the intention was just for the next two years to get through that. Because that'll be completely two years. And if it's not, then the cohorts are going to have to work Fairs. after school and uh -huh. if it doesn't get done, I think. I have a question. For those days you're talking about with the gap between sports, would students be able to stay afterwards or they'd be required to leave? Yeah, we'd have to, they'd have to, we don't have supervision. Right. So that's why we'd have to, if some students want to figure this out, we'd have to find a way to have like some sort of fee so they can pay for the so how we pay for the supervision I'm on the occasion yep well <laughs> yeah. and that's really it it's basically extending math to sixth grade to eighth grade or whatever it is right and I being able to do that. that I'm just thinking my child I would he'd want to do sports but yet not old enough could we just do what we do on the late start the buses go though mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah, they're within the school for an hour. They're still hour. like on early start yeah. if they ride the bus, I have to hear for yeah, right an hour or so before school. And we have staff that are here paid that are, but aren't we paying high school? Will high school staff still be? I mean, I know they're doing PD, other, they're but, doing PD as well. They're doing catalyst training and that kind of thing. Could you rotate, but don't they rotate in the morning on uh, to supervise them? Yeah. But you just do the same thing in the afternoon, unless it affects like required PD. Then I that I get. Okay, you just rotate out the. Except we do have paras coming in at the regular time, don't we? On those C days, whereas this we wouldn't. So we have that be additional cost. I mean, we have some savings about that. What the look at? I'm just trying to yeah. think of a way to make it work for families that would need. Good look at them. It'd be nice to yeah. Because they would want to cancel practice on this if they could avoid it. Uh, there's probably more than one problem. If we go with option four, there's probably more than one problem that we haven't thought of yet. Oh. And they'll have to have to move on the fly as some. You know. I agree. I like option four as well. Were we going to have any further discussion about there was that comment about uh, Memorial Day weekend? graduation well and so i had emailed all of you guys to ask about that what you thought and if if we want to look at that other calendar you know it, it is a consideration um but the other thing that i look at is we know better now right so we need to do better as far as hey we know that we're going to lose that funding if those uh kids aren't there if we do graduation earlier um and if it's to the tune of ten thousand dollars or so, you know, next year's graduating class is pretty big, so it's probably pretty close mm -hmm. to that. Um, if last year's was was around that uh, mark, you know, over the next ten years, 
when we're looking at, we have to spend a million dollars to replace our roof or so, right? That's what we think right now. That's uh, that's a hundred thousand dollars that we can put towards that that isn't being spent. That we wouldn't have to go for a bond for taxpayer levy to increase taxes to pay for that. That's a hundred thousand dollars that we wouldn't have to pay for. Is is really what I'm what I looked at with that. that that's the only way to look at it, but. Other thoughts on that? How long has it been Memorial Day? When did we change it? We've been doing Memorial Day for many years now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some years they didn't have as many breaks during the year uh, from January to May. So you have more days. And then if you don't have snow days, that's another factor that can come in. So like this year we've had you know that makes a difference christine workham.org or whatever it is that's when it's snow street feet that's who you talk to and then it also depends on what time labor day is because you have to start after labor day and so if labor day is early you get a little extra extension to your end of the year so every year is different I just know we've had concerns with parents keeping that date the same because that's what we live in an area where it's, that's the way it's always been. Let's keep it that way all the time. I get it. We need to make changes, but we we've, we've made it work for how long? In the district it hasn't affected anything. I mean, our fund balances are where they should be. We just went through that whole thing. If the fund balances are where they should be, and we've made it work this whole time. Why all of a sudden? I, mean, I just. <laughs> I haven't heard anybody that said that they liked the idea of the seniors going that last week. So I've been contacted by a few community members and they did say that they liked the seniors out a week earlier. If everything's working, I don't I guess I don't understand. I don't see it. I mean, I, I get the hundred thousand dollars towards the roof fund, is that where the money's gonna go? Or we're just saying that's where it could go. Well, is that it could be spent on many different things, right? And, and I totally get that. Right. You know, and, and I've had a different response. I've had a lot more talk to me about, you know, let's not do it on uh, Memorial Day weekend. And, you know, the, I had a lot of questions about why is this change happening? But otherwise, most of them have said, yep, let's not do it on Memorial Day. I've had a lot of that too with, with the traffic trying to get up here for people relatives or whoever wants to come. You know, the opposite for me, we already have family here, so it's nice to hear from Memorial Day, we come for graduation. Yeah. Well, and, and there's not one right answer. You know what I mean? Like, not everybody's gonna be happy either, either way we go with the calendar, so. But at least we're talking about it, we're making a, an informed decision about what that is and you know obviously everybody votes compared to what their people are telling them you know that's what we're here to do do we have an option with the early outs and do it on memorial day or not i, I don't have one of those so i don't feel like there's ever an option to have that memorial day graduation day we never had that option. Well, well it was though. No, it wasn't. That's a no, memorial day it, But I had emailed and asked you guys if there's any other calendars that you want to see. Oh. And not one person said yes, I'd like to see this calendar. And that was three weeks ago. Mr. Chairman, I like to move option four. I'll second. Director Hackett. Second, Director Bowman. All right. Are there any more discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. I'm saying. 
right, motion carries five one. All right, uh, policy readings. So we have an entire slew of uh, new policy readings since uh, we finally kicked out about what one, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. um, six of them that we've had on the docket and gone over, I don't know, probably five months total going back and forth on making sure that they're right and they're right for Royalton and, and that good stuff. So we have uh, seven more uh, new coming in and then uh, like uh, Director Hackett talked about the video surveillance other than on a bus. So we're taking a look at the video recording on school buses to see how that affects that one as well. Um, so we've read it once. And uh, so this next time we're bringing it for a second reading to come back with some um, different things to, to look at on there. Because that one to me is one that I want to make sure we get right um, with the schools. And then the fund balances on that one, uh, that'll probably come for approval next time. Um, but we had to change like three words because we counter contradicted ourselves with this one versus uh, the percentage versus the, what was the? Monthly expenditure. Monthly, three, months yep, three months of expenditure. So we're gonna make it so it's the, the percent for that. Um, so I will take a motion to uh, approve the second policy reading. Uh, for 713 student activity accounting. And and we can't do those together. No. I move the second policy reading for 713. Okay. For adoption. Director Hackett. I'll second. Second Director Bowman. And shout out to policy team. You guys have taken on a lot. Great work. There's a lot. <laughs> so so yeah, so if you're not on the policy team, don't realize that. You know, we have our Royalton policies and then there's MSBA and MSBA policies are written for schools that are four times bigger than Royalton and larger. So sometimes the things don't make a lot of sense here for us. So shout out for, for administration for helping us through that because you know, this is a lot of heavy reading and sometimes you're like, well, does that apply to Royalton? Or the one that, the question that we've asked in the last year more than ever before is, do we have to do this? I mean, everybody needs more jobs, right? You know, it's, it's just, do we have to do this? And we, we, you know, and we always, you know, I, we always ask, you know, how does this, how does this help the students and stuff and the school get better? But yeah, it's, thank you. Thank you for the shout out. So they do, they do a good job. Yeah, and we figure out what we actually have to do, what the legislation says we actually have to do. And then what the recommendations are for that and see if they fit within that. So understanding the difference between those two is is not easy sometimes either. I always like the question, are we doing this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, any other discussion on 713? All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, motion carries. And then number four for approval of the third policy readings of 210 conflict of interest school board members, 506 student discipline, 534 school meals policy, 620 credit for learning, 621 literacy and the READ Act, and 624 learning options, online learning options. And I'll move that one. Second. Second by Director Bowman. All right. Uh, any other dis any discussion on those? <laughs> All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Motion carries. All right. Uh, next is upcoming meeting schedule. Uh, so we need to schedule a work session. Um, I didn't look at my calendar too hard, but I did look at uh, sooner than later for like the 25th or the 26th of March. If we can get a consensus on one, one of those or not. I'm not available the 26th. But you are the 25th? I think so. Okay. 
I think at the front. That's the call. So if it works for me. Yep. Yeah. I can move over. Sounds great. You think it's six o'clock, right? Yes. <clears throat> I don't know if it matters, but that would not work. I don't think, I think we'll probably do okay. If I have, I'll maybe get stuff on the head. Yeah. And yeah, we will need some stuff from you ahead of time, I think, um, for that. So, um, so we'll schedule the 25th at 6 p.m. at 6 p.m. Good for everybody. Good night of March 5th, right? Yes, sorry. Did I say April? No, no, okay. so you just said the 25th. <laughs> yes, confirming. It's every 25th. Every 25th. Every <laughs> <year>. <laughs> Are you good, Lucas? Yep. Okay. All right. We'll schedule that for 6 p.m. So right now, what I have on the agenda from the feedback that I've gotten from you guys as well is uh, a school resource officer. We're going to talk about that some more um, and the cost of that. And then, Lucas, you are going to contact the um, St. Cloud superintendent, or do you want? Correct. Yep. I'll contact you. Okay. Um, I haven't figured out the time frame for that. Like, I'm thinking about 40, 45 minutes for the SRO discussion just to keep us on track. Um, that can change, but uh, let me know what you think when you sure. talk to her about yep. what that is. Um, and then phone policy is the next thing that we're going to talk about um, with Little Falls taking the cell phones out of school and what that is. Um, Maria had some stuff from Owatonna as well that talked about that and uh, and test score changes with that. So I thought that'd be neat to hear about and, and see if that's worth some, something worth looking at here, but at least just hearing about it. What is their first year? How did it work? What did it look like? And um, that. Um, and then Budgeting with enrollment, uh, as we talk about homeschool, um, you know, exit survey, that type of thing. Uh, we'll kind of figure that out there and how the how the funding affects that between that and PSEO, at least the stuff that we can affect. Um, and then we'll probably talk about the uh, lunch debt there in more detail with the detail that we, we can get from there. Is there anything else um, you guys want? That's I mean, that's pretty full docket, I think, for work session. Is there anything else that we need to talk about that I'm missing? Okay. Otherwise that that's pretty much that's gonna be that. And like I said, it'll be probably 45 minutes, 30 minutes, and then another 30 minutes for that. And then we can talk about, you know, whatever else. I mean it's an it's an open open floor, but I don't want to have it just keep talking and lasting forever. So keep us on task a little bit. Um, and then two other things. So Angela and Randy, um, if you can talk to whether it's tonight or tomorrow, um, for the principal negotiation and then Lucas, you and I have to do the, uh, directors for the non-union at some point here. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll figure that out probably tomorrow or something, or we can sync calendars tonight. Uh, and then Wednesday 27th is the finance meeting and then the policy meeting. And we have, yep, we have our policies there. Um, and then the next board meeting is uh, Monday, April 8th. Uh, so a couple meetings in short order uh, right there. Is there anything else for the good of the group? All right, I will take a motion to close the regular meeting uh, at 7.29 p.m. for superintendent evaluation as permitted by Minnesota statute section 13b.05. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Director Trout. Second. Director Bowman. All right. Uh, and we will resume the closed session at 7.40. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah.